A very good morning to you and welcome to our worship for Chorley and Leyland Methodists for this Sunday, the 20th of September, otherwise known as Peace Sunday. Peace be with you. Welcome to worship. We're continuing to follow through a series looking at Matthew chapter 18 to 25 under the heading The Way of Jesus, Living the Jesus Way as Disciples. And today we're into chapter 20 of Matthew's Gospel, the parable of the workers in the vineyard. The first shall be last and the last shall be first. Also delighted to be joined this morning for our uh, story testimony slot by a number of our young people who are about to go off to university and start new courses. So we look forward to hearing from them and praying for them as they go off to university in the next week or two. We had a circuit meeting this last week via Zoom and I want to thank everyone for their participation. It was a very helpful meeting. We're living in very changing times, aren't we, with uh, new regulations and new questions to be asked every day. But I um, wanted to reassure you the work of the circuit continues and we're very excited about some of the possibilities that are emerging for the year ahead. I invite you to keep praying for the life of our circuit and all of our churches. Uh, just to mention two situations for your prayer uh, as a circuit. This last week, uh, our colleague Tony conducted a funeral service for Miriam Wodge from Eccleston Methodist Church. Miriam was a very faithful servant of the Lord in that place, particularly through her gift of music uh, and playing the organ and accompanying worship. So we remember with thankfulness Miriam's ministry of music and we pray for her and for all of her family at this time and for the church family at Eccleston. Also to mention a family in mourning at Leyland Methodist Church, the family of Marilyn Coyne. Uh, Marilyn died after a very short illness, um, an untimely death, and Marilyn has served as a member of the staff at Tiddlywinks Preschool, which is attached to Leyland Methodist Infant and Junior School. She's very, very well known in the community. She was a Sunday school uh, part of the Sunday school team and uh, Holiday Bible Club and other activities at Leyland Methodist Church. And so there's great sadness at her passing. And we ask you to pray particularly for Marilyn's family at this time as a funeral is prepared for this coming Thursday. So we do remember in prayer all those who are grieving and in particular remember the family of Miriam and the family of Marilyn this weekend. We're here to worship God, to give him thanks and praise for this glorious life that he has gifted to us, the beauty of the weather uh, and the countryside and the outdoors that we perhaps have been able to enjoy in the last few days. So thank you for being here to worship together. Um, and I invite you, of course, to join us after the service for a Zoom coffee and chat, and we'll catch up with one another then. Uh, stay in touch, stay safe, and let's worship God in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For our opening prayers this morning, outside in the glorious sunshine, um, I wanted us to use our hands as we return to our churches for worship. A number of our churches have already begun to worship back together during the week and on Sundays. Of course, we're wearing masks indoors and we're encouraged not to sing or to really be proclaiming things from where we're sat. In some places, they're using this as an opportunity to use our hands more in worship to communicate without speaking. So I'm going to do the Lord's Prayer in sign language. Some of you may have learnt this in slightly different ways, but we'll go through it together as a prayer this morning. The Lord's Prayer in sign language. The Lord's Prayer, of course, contains um, adoration and confession. We ask for forgiveness from God 
um, and we put our lives in trust to him. So let me go through the signs and then I'll invite you to do the Lord's Prayer with me as our opening prayer. We tell God we adore him, we worship him for who he is, we recognise our faults and failings and seek his forgiveness and his renewal. And all of these things are contained in this prayer that he teaches us. In response to the question, Lord, teach us to pray. That's what the disciples asked. Lord, teach us how to pray. And he says, when you pray, pray like this. Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth just as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins just as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Easy, eh? Well, why don't you try with me without our voices? And we'll pray together our opening prayer of adoration and confession and thanksgiving for who God is. Join with me.
this morning and I wanted to share with you a tradition that we have here at Hillside Church. Every year at this time of year, we send off all our young people to go off and do new things in their lives. And what we do is we bring them out to the front, much to their embarrassment, and we give them what we call a starter pack, a, a pack of goodies for their new lives. And my own children have had all of these. We've been doing it for many, many years, so all my children have had it. And I've got it on good authority that these bags get better and better every year. Now, I'm here this morning with Tim and Laura, and she's, she's delighted because she's actually got her bag. She didn't think she was going to get one under these circumstances, but she was delighted when Tim and Angela came round and, and brought the bag to her at home. But we thought we'd like to share it with you. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hand over to Tim, and Tim's going to show you what's in Laura's bag and how we prepare our young people to move on into the next stage of their lives. Hi Laura, here's the bag that we gave to you on Sunday, so let's just have a look and see what we've, um, we've got in store for this year, shall we? So firstly, most importantly, um, as you're all going to be doing lots of cleaning and washing up, some cleaning material, um, some washing tablets as well. Um, that will obviously save you bringing your washing home at half term or whenever you come. Tea towels as well, so all good stuff there to, to keep your flat nice and tidy and clean. So what else that might there be in there, do you think? Oh wow, some chocolates and um, some goodies. Um, yeah, they're definitely important when you're going to be struggling maybe to study at night and keep, keep going. So there'll be plenty to do there. Yeah, the, the days of having meals put on the table have gone, so you're going to have to cook. Um, so a little bit of basics there to get you going. I think there might be some recipe books later on. Some playing cards to keep you um, in, in, entertained and hopefully you're going to be able to find a way of um, social distancing with some friends there to, um, to, to get to know them. It's going to be a bit harder this year, especially in university, but I'm sure you'll find out how to, um, how to do that. Ah, again, most importantly, some study materials. There will be a little bit of studying done, I'm sure, during the, uh, the course of your time there, so that's really important. And um, what else have we got? Um, and now we've got some resources as well, some books, um, some guides, to help you um, connect with other people, um, connect with other young Christians as well. And so, yeah, some really helpful stuff there that um, we, we just hope and pray will, will help you settle in when you, uh, when you get away. And I say, everybody's, everybody's got those, whether they're going to uni, whether they're starting work, whether they're starting college. So um, yeah, we just, we just hope and pray that, um, that everybody um, just, just has a great time. So I just want to just say a quick prayer for, for you and everybody else at this time. Uh, before we hand back to Michaela. So Lord, we just give thanks for, for all our young people across the, the circuit um, and here at Hillside. It's, it's a daunting and challenging time, Lord. We just ask you to be with them, to guide them, Lord, and to, to let them know that you're there comforting them, you're there guiding them and leading them, Lord, and that they, they may just rely on your strength in these, these coming weeks as they, um, as they move on to new pastures, Lord, and, and look to meet new friends and just settle into wherever it is that they're, they're going now, Lord. So we just ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. So those are the practical things we think that young people need when they go out to start a new life. Things like a dishwashing brush and a tea towel. Of course, we've been helping them to prepare for a lot longer than that. We've been working all together as part of our church family to prepare them for the challenges that they're going to face in life. And one of the ways we learn that is through these parables in the Bible, their stories, and their stories that Jesus used to teach his followers to prepare them for what was going to come. And we're about to hear one now from Matthew 20, and it's going to be read by Annette Cupid. She's been instrumental in helping nurture youngsters. She was the head of the school here in Brinskill. But before we read the parable, what we need to do is just rewind a little bit. It's quite good sometimes just to press that rewind button and look what happens before the parable. And what, what was happening was the, the, the disciples and the followers that were with Jesus had started to get into a conversation about what do you need to do 
to get into God's kingdom? What do you need for that approval? And Jesus tells them, it's not easy. So they say, oh, well, is there any chance of any of us getting there? <laughs> Jesus looks at them really hard. He gives them a hard stare, I think. They just don't understand. And he says, you've got no chance if you're trying to do it by yourself. But you've got every chance if you trust in God. So we can't just do life on our own. We need other people and we need God. Now, setting yourself apart and looking at what others are doing and what others have got can be a really lonely thing. Comparing yourself on social media, comparing yourself online, looking at what other people are doing, then sometimes it sets you apart and it makes you really lonely. And what Jesus has said here reminds me of a picture and a proverb. I'm going to put the picture up and I love this picture. It's the two Brownlee brothers as they cross a finishing line together and one of them virtually couldn't carry on running. But they started together and they wanted to finish together. It wasn't just about the winning. And it goes with this proverb that springs to mind. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, then go together. Now, even after that, Peter still chimes up and he says, but we've left everything for you, Lord. Jesus just replies with something that we're going to talk about later on in the service. He says, this is the great reversal. Many of the first will end up last and many of the last will end up first. Now, let's listen to that parable. Today's reading is taken from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 20, and it's Jesus telling the parable of the workers. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire men to work in his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a denarius for the day and he sent them into the vineyard. About the third hour he went out and he saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. He told them, you also go and work in my vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. He went out again about the sixth hour and the ninth hour and did the same thing. About the eleventh hour he went out and found still others standing around. He asked them, why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? Because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, you also go and work in my vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to the foreman, call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last one hired and going on to the first. The workers who were hired about the eleventh hour came and each received a denarius. So when those who came were hired first, they expected to receive more, but each one of them also received a denarius. When they received it, they began to grumble against the landowner. These men who were hired last worked only one hour, they said, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day. But he answered one of them, Friend, I am not being unfair to you. Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? Take your pay and go. I want to give the man who was hired last the same as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's so lovely to share the reading today and to hear about our young people who are going off to university. I was particularly delighted to hear that some of the children or young people, should I say, from Hillside who are going off to university were pupils at my school at St John's in Brinsco. And I'd love to wish them well as they embark on the next stage of their education. God bless and good luck. So it's great to have on the screen this morning a number of our young people. Um, well, we're all young people on this screen today. 
who are about to go off to university. So let's start with Laura. Laura's from Hillside. Uh, Laura, where are you off to and what are you going to be studying? I'm going to Cardiff University to do neuroscience. And how, when, when do you go? The 26th of September. Okay. And how are you feeling about that? Uh, a bit nervous, but we're all right. Well, it's an exciting time and you sat next to your mum who's also started uni. So tell, tell us what you're doing, Michaela. Um, I'm doing theology and ministry at Manchester University through Cliff College. And you're on your first week this week. I've just finished Freshers' Week, so I start my lectures next week. How's Freshers' Week gone? Well, different because it's all from home and it's all online. Um, and it's a Bible college, so it's a lot of tea and cake and things like that. But it's <laughs> very good, yeah. And do you know how much is going to be online for you, Laura? Um, I think it's kind of 50-50. You go in for some on Zoom for the others, so not that bad. So you've got accommodation sorted out, you're living in halls? Mm-hmm. All exciting. So next week is packing up week. Yeah, me too. Let's just nip across to Mary. Mary is um, an experienced student, shall we say? Is that a good thing to say? <laughs> so you're a I mean, yeah, you could say that. <laughs> you're a postgraduate student. You're, you're part of Chorley Methodist Church. Um, mm -hmm. What are you about to go and do, Mary? Um, so I'm going to do a Master's in Ancient History. And where are you doing that? Um, down in Oxford. Which is a place you already know? Yes, I know it quite well. Um, I've done four full years of studying there and sort of dropped back in in a fifth year when I was on a year abroad. It's a lovely place to be. I'm sure you know it well. So how do you feel about this uh, this new venture and when do you go? Um, so I, we're travelling part way on the 1st of October and then um, they're dropping me off on the 2nd. Um, yeah, I feel okay about going back. It will be interesting to see what it's like with all the different measures in place, but I'm sure it'd be fine. Excellent. So that's a bit of ancient history. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got theology with Michaela. And um, did you say neuroscience, Laura? Wow. Okay. And George also connected with us at Chorley Methodist Church. Um, well done with your a with your your course your studies, George. Thank you. Well done for your A level results, Laura. Um, tell us what you're about to do, George. Uh, so I'm going to Edge Hill to do a BA on in primary English education with QTS, uh, hoping to become a primary school teacher. Oh, well, that's a very noble ambition, <laughs> and um, you're going to be living at home, aren't you, and travelling? I am. Edge yes. Hill. Yeah. Um, you, you're happy with that decision? And then yeah, definitely. Because I know my mum doesn't want me to leave till I'm about 40, so I might have to change the change of mind on that one. <laughs> All right, okay. Uh, so how are you feeling about starting? And when do you start, George? Uh, I'm starting on the 28th of September uh, for induction week. I'm going to be three days in and two days online. Um, I'm a bit nervous but excited at the same time because it's like starting a new big school kind of thing, but for older kids really. So, yeah, it's going to be good. Brilliant. Oh, well, we're, we're, we are, as a circuit, as a family of churches, we're excited for all of you and these new opportunities. We have others in our circuit who are already at university. They're going into year two, year three. Gemma's from uh, Leyland Methodist Church, a member there. Gemma, where are you up to in your studies? Um, I'm just about to start my second year at Glasgow Uni. And it was a very different first year, wasn't it, for you? Because it ended a bit soon and you had to be at home for a very long time, which was such an ordeal. But how are you feeling about starting year two? And is any of that in uni or online? Yeah, um, I mean, I'm excited to be back and it's good to be around friends. Um, I'm definitely happy that I settled in first year. Um, but all of my classes are actually online this year. Um, so I'll be getting very familiar with using Zoom every day. So that's fun. Brilliant. Well, all the very best. And what is it you're studying, Gemma? Psychology. Okay. We've got quite a nice range of uh, courses being studied here. 
Uh, we're wishing you all well. Gemma, as you think about Laura and George, especially first time um, students at uni, what words of advice would you have from them for them? And Mary, you might have some as a seasoned student. Um, how, how, what would you advise Laura and George? Uh, and how might we pray for them? Advice? Um, <laughs> I would say talk to as many people as you can. Um, yeah, just talk to loads of people, just introduce yourself. Um, you meet some great people at uni. Um, probably won't apply to George because you're living at home, but Laura, bulk um, cook your food and then you can put it in the freezer and when you don't want to cook, then you can just microwave it. Um, that's a lifesaver. So that's my advice. Really good advice. Um, Mary, can you remember back to when you went to university first time? And, uh, first time. <laughs> what would you say to Laura and George and Michaela as she starts her course at Cliff College? Mm. Well, it's, I suppose it's going to be a bit different with stuff being online um, but basically you just try and take every opportunity you can that that sort of arises to go out and meet people and to enjoy yourself I think sometimes it can be really easy to get caught up in the work that you're having to do um, especially in a hard week and you might think because there's there's not always an escape from the work I think it'll probably be easier for George with being at home but um, sometimes it's hard to switch yourself off um, and feel like you're able to go and enjoy yourself. But you, you definitely are. Go, you know, if there's a college, like a, a uni pub or something or a cafe, go like get a drink with friends for like half an hour in a day or in an evening. Um, and don't be up all night writing essays. Is <laughs> it's my key one for people. Those, Definitely those, do it in the day and get enough sleep. <laughs> oh, those are great words of advice. And um, we, we're so excited for you. We hope there's a way of keeping in touch and you can let us know how you're getting on. But let me just pray for you all. And uh, I hope you feel a great amount of support from your local church, uh, but also from our group of churches across Chorley and Leyland. Father, we thank you for these amazing young people, and um, each one of them. Uh, especially we thank you for Laura and George and our other young people who've achieved really well in their GCSEs and A-levels and BTEC courses and all of their studies. Thank you that that's opened up an opportunity for Laura to go to Cardiff and for George to start his course at Edge Hill. Pray for Mary as she begins back in Oxford, a brand new course of studies, and for Michaela as she begins her years at Cliff College. Thank you for Gemma, and all those who are already at university about to start year two or year three. We're so proud of all of our young people, those who are getting jobs and apprenticeships. But we pray for those here who are about to start new courses, about to leave home, about to venture into something new, that they'd know that you are with them, that you go ahead of them, that you provide them with some wonderful new friends and amazing new opportunities and that they might know that their church family, uh, both their local church and across this circuit, we're praying for them and longing for the very best for them. So protect them and guide them and be with them, we pray, in your holy name. Amen. You are here moving in our midst I worship you
Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. is better? An orange or a banana? Now that's quite a difficult question to answer because it depends what we mean by better. If I'm saying which tastes better, then I imagine that we'll be quite split really. Half of us might think an orange tastes better and the other half a banana. If I'm actually asking which is better nutritionally, which has more vitamins and, and minerals, well, an orange has more vitamin C, but a banana has more potassium. Maybe I was asking which is better for juice, the orange, which is better for sustaining us uh, throughout the day, a banana. And what if I was asking which is better for making a pie or a crumble? I'm not sure I would actually use either. It is a difficult question to answer because there are so many variables. An orange and a banana really are just too different to compare. And it's the same with humans. And yet how often do we compare ourselves to others? If you think about your group of friends or your family group, is there one person who you would say, they're the clever one? So if there's a problem or a question or you're putting together a quiz team, oh, we need that person, they're the clever one. Maybe there's somebody in your group who you would say is the funny one, the one who always cheers you up when you need it. Maybe there's somebody who's the kind one, the one you know who you can go to and who will really listen to you if you need a shoulder. Maybe there's somebody who's the holy one, the one who always has the, the moral answer. And where do we fit in to that group? Are we any of those? Would we say we were the cleverest or the funniest or the, the, the kindest? Or are we kind of lower down in that group? Comparing ourselves to other people is like comparing an orange to a banana. And in our parable, that's where it all went wrong. So we had these workers who were employed early in the morning 
and they were given a decent amount of pay for their day. Had they been the only ones who'd been employed, they'd done their work, they'd got their pay, they'd gone home, they would have been happy. But when they started to compare themselves to others, that was when they got dissatisfied. So I've worked longer than he has. They haven't worked in as much heat as we've done. They've only been there for an hour. We've been here all day. It was the comparison that made them dissatisfied. In life, it is often when we compare ourselves to others that it makes us unhappy. If we just think about ourselves and what we have in isolation, we could be quite content. We have enough food. We have shelter, most of us. We have friends and family, again, most of us do. But it's when we look at what others have got and they seem to have more that we become unhappy. Maybe we should stop comparing ourselves to one another and only compare ourselves to who God wants us to be. God loves you. And that love isn't limited to a finite number of people. Just because he loves the person down the street doesn't mean he can't love you. And just because he loves you doesn't mean he can love, can't love the rest of your family. God's love is infinite. And that love doesn't come in degrees. He doesn't half love somebody and love somebody else more. Love is love. Perfect love in God. And his love is for all. And God wants each of us to be part of his community, part of his family, doing our work and giving our gifts to him. And in the parable, you know, he wasn't content, the vineyard worker, with just employing one group of people. He wanted more and more. He kept going out and getting more people to be part of that community. And that's what God wants. He wants to draw us all in to his community. And what we receive from God isn't earned it's a gift. We cannot earn God's love. We cannot earn forgiveness. It is given to us as a gift. And in our parable, the vineyard worker knew how much a person needed to support their family for the day. A denarius was a fair wage for a day's work. But he didn't want to distinguish between those who were chosen first and those who were chosen at the end. Those who only worked an hour, they still needed the same amount of money to support their family and their friends. Just because they'd only worked for an hour didn't mean that when they went home, their children would be less hungry. And so the vineyard owner wanted to employ them all, give them all a good day's wage. It wasn't the fault of those employed later that they hadn't been chosen sooner. And he wanted to give each of them that gift, regardless of how long they had worked. It's a bit like ministers. We don't get paid as such. We certainly don't get paid per hour. We receive a gift of what the church deemed to be what we need to live on for a month, our stipend. So whether we do five hours work in a week or whether we do 55 hours work in the week, it doesn't affect what we take home in terms of money, in terms of that gift. So does that mean that as ministers, we look around at other ministers and think, oh, they don't do as much work as we do, or, oh, they're not working as hard as we are? Or do we accept that gift and think about what God wants us to do, how he wants us to use our gifts and our talents in the place that we are? God gives because he is generous and because he wants to give to us he wants to develop a relationship with us your relationship with god is about you and god it's not about anyone else it's not about comparing ourselves that so and so is more holy or so and so does more good works all that matters in our relationship to, with god is us and god are we living up to god's expectations of us are we being the person that God wants us to be? You are special to God. Do you know how much he loves you? Do you know how much he has forgiven you? Do you know how much he wants to be in a relationship 
with you. It doesn't matter if we've been a Christian all our lives or whether today is the first day. All that matters is today. All that matters in our relationship with God is how we live today. Everything that's gone before is past. God forgives and forgets. Everything that's to come in the future is in God's hands. All that is important is today. Only you are important in your relationship with God. Not anybody else, just you. And living the Jesus way is about us and how we live. Not about comparing ourselves and our way of life to anybody else other than Jesus. So let's not compare ourselves to others, but only to who God wants us to be. So may we open our hearts to receive his love and his grace today. May we work on our relationship with God today. May we start to discover who God wants us to be today. Know that you are loved by God. Know that you are forgiven. And know that you are special to him today. And so, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. Another way in which Jesus is telling us of the topsy-turvy rules and laws of God's kingdom, so different from that of our own. And of course we recognise that we're living in a topsy-turvy world at the moment, with all the uncertainty and the constant changes due to the lockdown through Covid. And we think particularly this morning of Reverend Jill, who along with her family is having to self-isolate. And we think of all those other families with uncertainties over whether they have the infection, trying to get a test and awaiting those results. And so with those thoughts in our mind of God's topsy-turvy rules, the first being last and the last being first, let us offer our prayers for others. And when I say the words, the Lord hears our prayer, please respond, thanks be to God. The Lord hears our prayer, thanks be to God. Let us pray. Generous God, we pray for our world in which your gifts are meanly kept by some from others. Cure our poverty of spirit that your abundant love may flow throughout the world. We pray for the poor in every land, for those caught up in violence and war. The Lord hears our prayer. Thanks be to God. For those known to us who have particular needs. For our church as it seeks to live and speak of the good news you gave in these different times of ours. May we always seek new ways in which your word may be made known. The Lord hears our prayer. Thanks be to God. Lord Jesus, you hear our prayers. Welcome our concern and invite us to share in your work of changing the world. Give us generous hearts that we may work and pray and live to your praise and glory. Amen.
Well, thank you for joining with us this morning for our worship. I hope you've been blessed and have much to think about and pray about in the coming week as we consider the first shall be last and the last shall be first. I wonder how we'll put that into practice, seeking to raise up those who might feel themselves to be last and least and lowest and lost. Challenging words. Of course, all the grace and mercy and goodness we receive from God, all the forgiveness we receive is to be passed on to others as we freely receive, so we freely give. I thought to close our worship, we just sing that little chorus from the song, God forgave my sin. Freely, freely, you have received. Freely, freely give. Go in my name, says Jesus. And because you believe, others will know that I live sing it a couple of times and then the blessing he said freely freely you have received freely freely give go in my name and because you believe others will know that i live he said freely freely you have received freely freely give go in my name and because you believe others will know that i live may that be true and may the blessing of god father son and holy spirit rest and remain with each one of us and with those we love and with all the world on this peace sunday and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Hope to see you in our Zoom coffee and chat room in a few minutes. Take care, God bless and have a good week and stay safe and well.